All right. I believe we are live. They simplified it. That's fantastic. I love that they simplified it. So if you are joining us from the groups, if you're joining us from Twitch, if you're joining us from YouTube, we have many, many, many different places that this stuff goes live on. Um, welcome. We are taking a moment today, more than a moment, more than a few, to talk with Sablier Watches and their founder, Casey. So we're going to take a little time. We're going to talk about the design language. We're going to have a conversation about where this all got started. Um, we're really just going to kind of dive into the details. And this is something that I think most watch review channels, they tell you the spec sheet. And I love spec sheets. They're fantastic. It's very easy to read. You get all the information, but it doesn't tell you the details. And today, we're going to take a look at all of the details that come along with Sablier watches. So to start off with, we'll go around. We'll kind of introduce ourselves. Um, Casey, will have you go last because then you can kind of dive into a little bit about the history of this, you know, right after that. Um, first, though, we'll do a wrist check. What are you guys wearing? What do you got? Start with you. Or you, Zach. I'll start with what KC. He's the star of the show today. He'll start with KC. Uh, no, I just read the um, Grand Cru, um, second generation, um, the Grand Cru 44. Uh, black dial on my wrist on the uh, the ray uh, Very nice. nano strap. Yes. By the way, I'm living in Atlanta, so this is kind of color of the uh, Atlanta Falcon. You're right over there by uh, by Tyler. Oh, He's over there in Carrollton. Yeah. You're right up the road. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tyler, what you got and, on uh, today? So, the vintage Tudor prints, the gold plated. Um, it's from like the eighties. So kind of fitting eighties Bodhi Yachty watch and it's right for sale. The theme. If anybody's interested for sale or, <laughs> tra or trade, that I means. like it <laughs> for sale or trail. You can take it on the trail if you want to. Um, I am on the very yeah. last bit of trail, right? the, uh, earn spends chronoliner. Of course I put the autofocus lock on, so it's not going to do it. Um, I'll pull it back here then. Um, Ernst Benz has been fantastic and they've offered me the opportunity to be part of this wonderful journey. They have three watches. You can kind of see the, uh, the box over my shoulder here that they all come in. Um, they've been going around hitting up a bunch of the Instagram guys and a bunch of the other watch guys that, uh, that are all, you know, doing reviews, doing things like that. And, and they were, they were nice enough to send them to me for a couple of weeks. I've had a lot of fun taking pictures and just kind of checking them out. I am almost about to send them back up. Um, two earned spends. They're going to go to somebody else and then they're going to go to Tyler. Tyler's over on this side. They're the, like trying to figure out like yeah. where you are on the thing. You know, they're going to go to Tyler I'm after the next for. guy. So um, <clears throat> keep your eyes open. It's a fantastic little thing. Um, the reason I like this one so much, when they get done with this tour, they're auctioning off these pieces to charity. It's, it's pretty cool. Just a neat little thing um, to do. So I figured for this one, because it's, it's technically my last day with them, I would wear it for now. But our focus today is on Sablier watches and wine as a motif and what that means. Wine and watches, like people do wine and watches, but they don't always design a watch based on wine motifs. They have wine when they talk about watches. They have wine when you buy a new watch. You know, I've been to ADs and bought a new watch and they bring out the wine. Usually it's champagne. But wine and watches, a lot more connected than you might think. So, Casey, where did you... Like, what gave you this idea? Like, what's the history of Sablier as, as an idea, as a concept? The, um, I think this is a very good question. So I, I myself, I like uh, watches. And I think that can trace back to as a child, childhood. Um, when I grew up in Taiwan, and then um, I, I, I love anything mechanical. And by the way, my father was a, a jet mechanic. Uh, at a time, uh, he he was contracted by uh, U.S. government uh, to service the the fighter plane and also planes from the Vietnam War. And I think I um, I kind of grew that the kind of mechanical things from that that the age because the I remember he has a big toolbox, the red one, and and says USA. And then um, but funny things that it. it at the moment, I don't re, uh, realize that because that um, it's not matrix, it's English. 
-hmm. So I try to use that tool to to work on some of the appliances in my home <laughs> may not work <laughs> correctly, and oftentimes manage to uh, kind of break it down. And but no guarantee I can put it back up. And that's kind of started my uh, anything is about a, a fascinating about a mechanical thing. And um, so few years few years later, my father has the uh, Rolex, and he never let me touch. So. I said to myself, if one day I can afford to buy one, I'm gonna buy the Rolex. And then I started to buy one and then I don't know anything about watches. So just, you know, brand name, everybody knows and start to collect them. And, um, but I get to the point, I collect uh, many, like I have Tudor, I also have IWC. Um, I have the, uh, I think it's a tag. Mm -hmm. the, the, the chronograph is all the tech, it says Hewer, Tech mm -hmm. Hewer. I think it's before they become very uh, famous. And then a few mechanical watches. And I complain about that um, because it's not comfortable to my wrist um, because the the back is, has some steps and then um, sharp edges. Um, my wife says that you have the uh, mechanical, actually you have a, a bachelor's of science degree in, in engineer and you Let me a hiccup. came to United States solution, uh, fix that. So then, um, yeah, take it as the, uh, a challenge. So then, um, it took me, I didn't realize to, to come up with this Kanke, um, as a journey. Um, when I first designed the, the first. I would say like 20 design, it looks like very similar to the big brand name that I that I can think of. Nothing really different. So one day I um, kind of sitting in front of my computer, took my glasses off and I noticed the Kanke lens. And I started to think, have anybody actually do that? And um, the Kanke lens has a less uh, refraction. And it's, it's very interesting because the, it kind of, reduce the glare and also at some point it kind of enhanced the readability of the watch face and I started to think is, is that possible for me to design something like this or is something already out there mm -hmm. and if there's something out there and then I'll just buy it and the end of the journey I don't have to like dig into more <laughs> um, <laughs> so then I didn't know that and um at the time I I, I I drew some of the, uh, the sketches. I sent it to uh, one of my friends. He's a, a patent attorney. I say, hey, Chris, can you run this uh, patent search for me? Uh, see if anyone has done this before. And about like two weeks later, he said, Casey, I don't think anybody has done this before. That's very interesting. As the wristwatch has been invented like 120 years, but how come? So then, I say, okay, then this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to file my uh, patent application mm -hmm. and see if if this is true. Um, it's kind of like a like a science experiment. You wanted to find out the truth, so you have to do you have to do it. Right. And not knowing that um, it took me five years to have the patent granted, and it kind of proved that okay, uh, maybe I'm the first one actually get it done because um, there's so many people out there, they may have think about this before, but maybe they don't think about to apply for a patent. But this patent is the uh, utility patent. So um, it's not about the look and feel, it's about the, the way it, it work together, mm -hmm. the concave uh, lens, uh, the dial, and how do you put them together? So that's, that's where this idea comes from. See, it's interesting because like concavity in watches, um, you know, when he said, hey, I don't, you know, your patent attorney said, I don't think this has been done before. It's it's so true because you see every other watch. I mean, this one included, you know, you've got convex everywhere, right. everywhere. You know, you've got like the domed crystal, um, you know, and on, on many, many, many watches, that's that's a very, I guess, near and dear fear, feature to people's hearts. They love that convex crystal, but you know, at the same time, like it, it's like a novel idea. It's it's like simple, but 
it's not. You, it's simple to be like, well, what if we go the other way? Like, what if we create kind of, you know, that concavity on there? And in my view, it's it's such a simple thing to arrive at. But I'm sure, like, along the way, it was like, wait a minute. Like, what are the challenges? What are the, like, what kind of problems do we have to solve? You know, what sort of what sort of ways can we get to this conclusion? And you're literally just taking the bend from this way to this way. But to get there, to, like, say, wait a minute. Like, how come watches aren't doing this? I, it just it, the brain the brain function to get there is what's what's interesting to me. Yeah, I think this is a very good question. I don't like my watch to be scratches, mm -hmm. um, and also um, I feel like the sometimes it's it's too busy. The design wise is not easy to to read, and when I design a watches, I try to find out is there any way I can protect my glasses without adding more thing on top of that. Because mm -hmm. it's kind of like, I have met Apple iPhone as beauty as itself. And sometimes because the way we use that, I, I need to buy a case. But you buy a case, you kind of, you kind of cover the beauty of that. It, you, you know, when you, when you hand that case in your hand, mm -hmm. the user experience is not the same. So then I started thinking, this is how do I protect it? Um, that without adding more. So that is where the idea actually orig originated from. And like I said, one day I took my glasses off and noticed that Kanke reduced glare and also Kanke can have the less chance for you to scratch it because the, uh, the, the outer ring, the bezel is already um, protect that for mm -hmm. you to for you, for, it's naturally like that. So it's very fascinating to me and say, how, how come nobody had done that before? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's fascinating because it's, you know, bezel scratching, crystal scratching, it's it's such a common concern. We, we see that in all the groups. We see that in so many ways where somebody says, you know, oh, I the older watches with the kind of the plexiglass, you know, very much, very much more prone to scratches because, you know, before right. Sapphire became mainstream, it was a softer material, um, you know, so easy to buff out with, you know, poly watch. But in some of the more vintage watches that people have that have that plexiglass, it's 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 common, you know, oh, I don't want to chip it. I don't want to scratch it. I don't want to send it in for service because now it needs a new crystal and, you know, and the grand scheme of a service a crystal replacement is a very easy thing for a watchmaker to do it takes no time at all um but you know to to kind of look at that problem and say you know how would you reduce the scratches on this if you could like what what could you redo in in the material in and not just the material but the design of those materials and how they come together like that's why it's interesting to me the way that the way that these happen Right, right. Because a lot of time we don't necessarily look into the um, what is the root cause for certain certain uh, certain issue. Mm -hmm. And um, and also myself, I'm a, a medical device engineer. So that the human factor anatomy and also the looking into the the root cause is sometimes is like what I start my design from. I wanted to understand what really caused that. In, instead of you just, you know, give, you know, now nowadays society just give you the uh, the the medicine, right? And it's kind of like help you to to get comfortable and and get over the the symptom. But if you look at into the the root cause, if you can do the preventive medicine, eventually it can help you live healthier not mm -hmm. rely on something that is unnecessary because the any medicine has the some toxicity to it. Oh, this word is difficult for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, anything that it can, because body has a, has a capability to naturally heal by itself, but it's something really um, dramatic happened like you, you have a, a trauma, you, your leg is cut off, then you have to have a surgical surgery, you know, yep. to repair that. Yeah. Right. So there's like, there's a, there's a threshold where 
once you go past that, you know, it's you, you require a lot more care. That's correct. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's interesting to, to talk about the root cause, because I feel like in watches today, um, especially among the micro brands, the root cause for them is making their watch look like a Rolex Submariner. And I know that the Rolex Submariner is a classic watch. I've owned one. They're fantastic. They're great to look at. Um, you know, it's it, it will forever be a standard by which a lot of other watches are judged. But to step out of that train of thought, I think, is is important because in the in the world of micro brands and it's a golden age right now of micro brands, like there are so many people that are starting micro brands. And I use the term golden age loosely because, you know, some people are starting micro brands and they're creating watches that are exactly lookalikes of Rolex and Mariners. And they don't say Rolex, but I mean, if you looked real quick, if you just looked at it and look back, you'd almost not know. But to step out of that, I think, you know, the creativity and, and the ability to say, OK, we're going to do something that, that literally nobody's done before. Like that's that's huge, though. Like nobody's done concavity. Nobody's done concavity as a, as a design element that's integral to the entire design language of the watch. Like nobody's done that, you know, they've done Mercedes hands. They've done like the triangle indices at 12 o'clock and, you know, they, that's all been done and everybody has, everybody's done it. They've done it so many times. I mean, it, if it was a digital CD, it would be re It would be worn out and that's hard to do. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's fun to me to see this type of a thing happen in watches where you've got, a completely different philosophy than, than anyone else is really looking at. They're just, it's, it's so far away from, you know, this mainstream norm of, I need to create the next Submariner. It, you're just not trying to do that. And I love that. I absolutely love that, that you just, you stepped away and you said, I'm not, I'm not following the crowd. I'm not doing everything everybody else is doing. That's not for me. I, I want to solve problems. I'm not here to just create, you know, a Tudor Submariner or a Rolex Submariner, I want to solve actual problems that come with watches. Right, right. I think that that's kind of, um, yeah, you describe it uh, pretty uh, well. That's the, what I wanted to do. Because if I own, if I have already had my Rolex and, and Tudor and IWC, why do I want to create something exactly the same? Just put a different brand name and it doesn't fit into my knee. And my knee is the, I want it to be uh, comfortable. I, I think I have a very sensitive uh, wrist. And then um, I usually wear the watch on my right wrist. Because I think it's maybe when I grew up in Taiwan, I have some motorcycle accident. And um, maybe this is make my, my, my wrist is super sensitive to that. Um, so when I design, I start to think about if anything I can do to make it comfortable, what can I do? Mm -hmm. So then I started to think, okay, I noticed it because the, the different step even uh, is very tiny. Your body would, would notice that. But sometimes it, because you, you wear that and then um, your body learn how to accommodate that and ignore, right? Let's say you have a shoes and then you have a, a little things coming into a little pebble in, inside your shoes. Oh, you know First, you, you feel like very uncomfortable, but for some circumstance, let's, let's say you, if you are a soldier, you need to march, you need to go down some places, you cannot take off your shoes. Mm -hmm. Then you, what do you do? You just you need to learn it. how to endure. And then certain time later, you don't feel that because your, your mind tell you, you kind of say, okay, there's something there, but we can take care of that later. But the problem is still there, mm -hmm. right? So then, yeah. I, I think that when when I look at that is if I wanted to to make it very comfortable, then if I can remove all the steps and all the uh, all the edges on the watch, especially the watch back and also uh, the lock of the watch, and that would be very comfortable to to the wrist if it can see. Oh yeah, I I can share. I yeah. do want to share this because very, I, very I think sweet. this is the. Uh... This is a good this is a good macro image right there of the soft edges. Everything's rounded block. off. I like that. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly that. Everything's rounded off. You're not looking at a piece. And so I guess for comparison's sake, you have the Submariner. And you know, again, love this watch. It's fantastic. It's a it's a fantastic piece. I think I don't know anyone that hates it. 
that I've ever met. I mean, I'm sure there's some out there, but in any case, like you can, you can see along the edges, you know, their machine and the, the attention to detail on these is, you know, well, it's, it's a sharp edge. We've always done it this way. We'll always do it this way. And that's, you know, the conservative view of, of Rolex, but in contrast, I mean, the just it's 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 such a smooth polished finish that I, I mean like it looks comfortable from here i haven't tried one of these on yet but it looks comfortable from here you know you, you could wear this for long periods of time under a cuff over a cuff it could go you know anywhere you want to go you could you could wear it for hours you could probably sleep in it and you're going to be fine i mean that that's a that's a problem solving thing, right? Th this is this is tradition. We've always done it this way. We've we've we will always do it this way, you know. And there's there might have been engineers at some point at Rolex who said, "Well, what if we rounded them off?" And they were like, mm, "No, that's we're we're based on tradition." So you know, you're not the first person I've ever heard that said that the Rolex has some sharp edges when you wear them in a bit. When you get a vintage one, they're very rounded off, and people love those. It's and it's like, well. You can get a rounded off one now. You don't have to wear it for for twenty or thirty years to get to this point. Yeah, and then you you kind of let's let's just stay on this the the picture here. So you kind of remind me that the, in the thirties and forties, uh, Rolex they have the uh, a smaller I think a 30, 33 or thirty four millimeter is called bubble back because mm -hmm. the back is kind of bubble and it's kind of mm -hmm. elevate the case up your wrist a little bit so it is comfortable but after that it's become like very uh sharp and for some reason my my wrist is just don't feel um comfortable and if you go back to Rolex the back view I don't have a Samariner I have the Explorer too um if you right. just scroll down a little bit it's see oh the yeah I, know. I see that I see that with the crown it doesn't have the crown and also the shoulder of the crown that's really bothered me um because when I wear that it, it's sticking to my skin all the yeah. time yeah 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 and and even the ridges on a crown so like this this is a fantastic piece i don't really have much to say that's negative um but the 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 bits on the crown and i know i know you can't see this i'm holding it up like you can i'm going to describe it as best as i can but the ridges on the crown that you use to grip it to wind it or to or to pull it out you know they are sharp and on many watches on many 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 watches this is the case and so you know, I, I, you're not the first person I've heard, and, and it's happened to me, where I, I notice after wearing a watch for a little while, I look at the back of my wrist, and, you know, there's like a dry spot where the crown has rubbed on my wrist a little bit, and I've noticed it, and I've said, oh, like, I guess I've kind of rubbed the crown the wrong way on, on my watch, and um, I don't see, oh, well, there, that's the perfect picture. You can see the crown with the concavity in it, but it's, but it's also offset, so... You know, I, I know when we when we chatted yesterday, you talked a little bit about the fact that, you know, having the crown offset from the three o'clock was was big mm -hmm. to you. Like what other factors really led to you thinking like, you know, this really is the right choice? I think the because the. Um, Say it again, it, I, I wanted to see if I can answer this question correctly. So. so yeah, when when you decided that you know you were gonna offset the crown, so offsetting the crown has been done by Seiko, um, and that design has grown on me. It wasn't something I originally liked. Um, I always thought the traditional three o'clock crown was something that you know just it was the gold standard. Everybody did it, um, of course, until like I said, I noticed that there was some some dry spots on my wrist from where that crown kind of interacts with your wrist on a day to day on a day to day basis. But um, you know, apart from Apart from, you know, some of the crown digging in, like what was some of the other things that inspired you to move the crown to the two o'clock position? Oh, okay. Very good question. Because the, I actually tried the four o'clock like my, I have, this is my vintage uh, Seiko. I'll, I'll stop the screen share so we can mm -hmm. see it closer. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So this, this vintage one, I also have the modern one. I have another two and they are all accepted to four o'clock, but this one is a smaller size. i I find this one is super easy to wear. This is a 38 millimeter wide. Mm -hmm. And I did the prototype of my watch um, with two and also four o'clock. And the reason why I choose two o'clock is because sometimes when you wear the watch, because of gravity, this would shift to here. 
if it's on the four o'clock, it is still gonna dig into your skin. Brings it back. Right. Mm -hmm. And two, then you literally don't have the problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then I decided I wanted to move it to two o'clock. But if you wear this under your right wrist, there's no question because it's so smooth on this side. See, this is this is this is problem solving though. This is what I'm saying. Like I feel like in watches, it's just only about the like the dial has to look good. The dial design is paramount. And that's like everything else is an afterthought. Um, you know, I know Tyler has some questions about the strap. I'll let him ask those in a little bit. Um, but I know that like everyone wants the dial to look a certain way. And of course, we'll 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 skip over the Submariner homages because they're out there. But like that seems to be the most common concern is how do the dial and hands go together and things like that. Like if gravity pulls your watch down, you know, if it's at four o'clock, you still have it digging into your wrist. Like this is problem solving. This is why I'm saying this. These are the details that when I look at Sablier watches, you know, of whether it's, you know, the 39 millimeter, the 44, like you can see this. And, 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 and if you're watching this and you're wondering, well, why is the, why is the crown way up there? I mean, there it is. That's exactly why. Because if you're working with your watch and you wear it a little bit on the loose side, I know most people are. It's a little bit loose more than more than it is tight because, of course, you know that's just the more comfortable way to wear it. But like the actual the thought behind it is like if it's up here and it falls down with gravity a little bit, you don't have that dig into your hand. I mean, that's fantastic. There's still problem no solving. Use the problem solving. Like you don't you don't get problem solving. You get like, oh, we want to we make I love Omega. I will always love Omega. I have to I have to preface this. The new Ultra Deep, I think it's fantastic. Someday I'll own one. But I'm not going down, you know, six thousand meters. It's just not it's not gonna happen. Is it cool? Meters. Is it chunky? <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. It's awesome. I love it. But like that's problem solving, but it's not practical problem solving. Like I'm not but like wearing that going, no reason. oh, this is this now I can shower in peace and I don't have to wear that. No, I <laughs> You could do that with a sablier. It goes down 30 <laughs> meters, right? So like you you'd be set. You'd be all you'd be good to go. But like that's some real problem solving of like everyday wearing of watches that you just don't get with anything else. You just don't. Right, right. And then and, and also this is one one more thing I wanted to uh, mention about the because the um I moved that crown from the two to uh I'm sorry, the three to two position. And if you look at closely the crown, it actually has a, a concave. Yeah, we can. I can bring that back up in the picture. It's yes. And before you do that, um, oh, I can stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm no, gonna show no. you because uh, you can tell me. <laughs> I, I'm kind of. I love engineering. So, um, this watch is waterproof for uh, 50 meter. But you just say that normally. I mean, any like regular people cannot dial it deep right mm -hmm. like i would say 10 meter is probably pretty difficult uh, without proper training but we have a um let's go back to this so we have a screw uh, in crown mm -hmm. and and the way we design is i i design is sometimes i look at the way is if you apply a perpendicular perpendicular force to the crown then you can actually close it in a very easy way. And therefore, if you apply the perpendicular force, so that's chance for you to be, if you grab um, two point, sometimes you can cross thread and yeah. get to you too. Yeah. So that's something that I, I decided yeah. I wanna put uh, the, the, the concave here and, and it, it worked pretty well, but not many people know about this, I mean, you, this you is what I'm talking something. about, though. Like the thoughts, like if you're watching this and, you, and you're wondering, like, oh, I've never heard of Sablier watches. Like, I, I, I understand that. But everything is thought about here. This isn't, you know, it watch design, you know, it's, many things are afterthoughts. Lug design, many things are afterthoughts. You know, the case shape, many things, they're just, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. You know, make it whatever. Make it whatever. We, we're focused on the dial. We're focused on the hands. But, like, the fact that you can sit there and, like, apply some perpendicular pressure. Um, like to me that like everything is thought of here. You, you thought of everything. You thought of literally everything when it comes to this watch and how to make it easier on the user. You know, there are, I don't know of any other watch brand 
that exists right now, and even the big guys, even the the, the multi billion dollar guys that really sit and think this thing through. They they have a solution. It's a traditional one, and they use it because it's cost cutting. It's easy, but it's not always thought through. It's not always something they're like, let's come up with a good solution. It's more often than not just, eh, we've used this for fifty years, a hundred years. Eh, we'll just use that. You know, we'll focus on Why something else. It. Maybe maybe yeah. we'll redesign. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, you you were you were um, you mentioned about another thing to hear is that I'm really interested about that. Um, how do we how do we f- make our everyday life t- easier? And sometimes you, you you don't pay attention to that because it's easy. If if you just like I said, you try to understand the root cause, mm-hmm. then oftentimes you have a solution for that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we choose not to go the route. We just say, okay, it's easy. We don't think about that. Let's not spend energy to think about that. And that, therefore, your you design something, it will be like very similar to some other people's. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like you're going to, I, I wanted to make a, a special cuisine, but how do you make a special cuisine? You have to have your idea uh, what kind of food you wanted to eat. You wanted to eat the Mediterranean style. Mm-hmm. You want to have the Asian style or what kind of uh, design the style you want. And then you start to think about what kind of ingredient you wanted to use and what's the process to get it done. And what kind of ingredient is has to be fresh, right? And then those kind of things are tied together. And speaking of wine, you're drinking wine. I love wine. And cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, cheers, cheers. <laughs> drinking some red. I'm, so I'm drinking red wine. I love red wine. But I also wanted to, to drink red wine because um, Sablier offers one, one of their watches in a burgundy dial. And it's my absolute favorite one that they have because when you look at it, um, oh, yeah. and I don't, I don't know if we'll be able to capture all of, all of the, the fine details that you see um, just with, with this live stream. But when you look at it, it looks like, and I, I know I'm like, I'm making weird movements in the camera, but like, it looks like you're looking into a glass of wine with the way that the dial is cuz it curves up at the edges you can all, you can kind of see it you can almost see it um let me i think i can highlight you yeah. as the let me make you the let me make you the the solo layout yeah so if you look you can see that it kind of curves up on the sides around you know the the minute markers and it's it's just it looks like you're looking into a glass of red wine on the summer day in the sun having you know pasta pizza whatever you love having with your red wine out in the sun on the summer day like that's fantastic that looks amazing so i i don't know i that's my favorite one that's a big reason why i'm drinking red wine um because i think it it just it really does that tyler your battery's about to die my brother yeah i'm gonna change that out real quick oh no problem no problem come on back when you're ready yeah. yeah yeah that's and i love i love i'm gonna let tyler talk about the strap i talked to him about it a little bit he asked about the strap earlier he said oh my god i love that cork strap and i'll let you talk to him about that because i know he's been dying to talk about that um when he comes back we'll jump into the strap because that that whole combination that you just held up that's my favorite i think that's that's everything's aesthetic and everything's subjective some people like this some people like that i i that one's my favorite so and for our customer, Mark, or not customer, our friend, Mark, I would say. Hey, Mark. Mark. Cheers, Mark. Have there a good drink. Go. He's drinking McAllen. Ooh. He's, Ooh. he's, got, he's got the good stuff out tonight. McAllen. Cheers, Mark. So, so Mark, you will drink it in neat or you put some Thanks. ice? I'm sure he'll, rep- he'll reply to us in a minute. Yeah. There's, there's always a little bit of a delay when you, when you, when you stream to the groups, there's always, I think it's like a 10 or 15 second delay um, just because it's got to like send it through all the right channels. But you know, when Mark comes, when Mark lets us know, I wonder if he drinks it neat, if he drinks it on the rocks, like what, what year are you drinking? If it's McAllen 25, we'll bow down to you. Cause that's some expensive stuff right there <laughs> on a ball of ice. He says on a ball of ice. Nice. Yeah. I like my whiskey yeah. cold too. So Tyler, I know you 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 asked me earlier about the uh, you asked me earlier about the the strap, and I know that that was something that you were really interested in. Um, so, you know, take it away if, if you want to ask about that. Like I, I I know that there's a whole process to it. So, 
Yeah, so I hopped on the site and started looking around, and the first thing that popped out to me was the strap. So is it actually, like, made out of cork? Or, like, what is the process to get that end result? Yes, so <clears throat> I think that uh, a lot of people ask the question about uh, the, the strap. It's actually made out of cork. And the our supplier they purchased the cork from the Portugal. You know, Portugal made a lot of cork, mm -hmm. and they send the, the raw material and also the leather to to Germany, and that kind of uh, process make this cork um, attached to the leather, and also uh, apply some kind of a, um, a coating to that to make it durable. And the processed product sent back to friends and they die cut it and they put, the, they just make it because the French, I think they are very good with the uh, making the other uh, little goods. So uh, the end product is actually finished in, in France. So it's already traveled three countries before it uh, imported into the United States. So um, it's super uh, pliable. <laughs> it's beautiful and the more you wear that and the more it's gonna become nice the the cork i it's a natural the worn um, look to it right right it's like very it, almost like you feel like alive the material is alive and hmm. I, I i don't know how to describe that so it kind of like breaks in after a while right Right, you know, certain later, right? Like kind of like how of, leather. Yeah, the where the more you wear, the more it is kind of become richer, and then also that the color is just is really nice to to you and the touch the same way. Um, so uh, we find out this is a pretty uh, awesome uh, solution, and we we um, we 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 decided want to do it that way. Uh, original, we have a different kind of prototype different kind of process, but I think we like this like 45, not 45, like 30 degree like stripe. It looks like very trendy and mm -hmm. very uh, interesting oh, yeah. to look at. Yeah. I just like that. That's, that a, that's a, a conversation start right there. Right. It's the actual quirk. Is a, is a conversation starter. Right. And also this quirk is it's not like printed um, later. I have some printed later, something like this. This is a, this is a cow later, but because the patents are printed, so oh yeah, it would be very similar, right? But no two pair of the cork would be the same. It would be totally different. That's awesome. So that's very fantastic. Unique. Like nobody makes a cork strap, dude. But All it's like UK. like I I have a cork desk pad. You know, and I don't, it's probably not even real cork because real cork's kind of pricey, but like it, it's, it's, I, I love cork. Like it's great for a desk pad. It's great for mm -hmm. that. Now we're on autofocus, you know, hiatus. This is great. Right in the middle of what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like I think cork is fantastic. Let me fix that autofocus. Come on, baby girl. There we go. Um, you know, so it's just like, there we go. Nobody makes a cork strap. They just don't. They leather all day. Like you see, you see so many things that are leather and, you know, you see alligator, which of course is just kind of <clears throat> stamped leather to make it look like alligator. You know, it's just the way mm -hmm. that stuff works, but like cork though, you know, and like it wears in and it, it wears not, not wears out, but like wears, wears to you, you know, I don't just a lot of the things that go together on these watches. This is why I think I'm fascinated by them because it's problem solving, it's engineering, it's attention to detail. And the strap is not an afterthought. You know, so many other watches, the straps are afterthoughts. It's just like, put it on black leather, put it on brown leather. Like, don't worry about it. We're not, we're not, we're not paying attention to it. Like, we don't care. Like, whatever. Just put it on leather. We'll, we'll sell it. Doesn't matter. Throw a branded like, clasp on it and then done. Right. Throw a branded clasp on it, be done with it, never think about it again. But this is like, hey, we're, we're talking about a watch that's based on like a wine motif. That makes sense. Like, why would you so not what have better way? Like, what better way? What better way would you have a, like a strap on a watch? Yeah. And then I think you just um, mentioned that. Um, Definitely. That, that the philosophy uh, with, with wine. 
So I, I think when when I first design a watch, um, I'm just try to be make it very comfortable to my wrist, and not just try to be different. But because of that thought, um, you make a concave lens, and then you. Oh, I have something I can show you guys. I don't know. Can you see? This is a cross session view. Oh, okay. Oh That's yeah. Cool. Now, okay. Tyler, if you look at that, um, you know, and I think I have. I I don't know if I have a bigger picture of that, but if if you look at your wine glass. Yours specifically, and you look at the shape of the case. Tell me what you see. Yeah. Look at your wine glass specifically, and look at the shape of the case. Right there. You see what I mean? Like this, th there was thought it, in every I mean, single part. It ties it all together. Like it all it also comes back around to that theme. Also, the concave. The concave is uh, that's another problem. We need to. We, we can. We can go. Uh, Talk about the concave is the different problem, but let's talk about the wine first. So, um, when when I design something, I wanted to make sure it's very smooth. You, you can see the, the the profile and and continuous and to the uh, the flat uh, surfaces with a display back. So it would allow you, it would enable you to uh, wear your watch very smoothly on your wrist because this part is flat, right, and then you curve. Um, when I when I do that and I I achieve the curvature of the side profile that I really like, and I start to think is the, the what does they tie into that? It's almost like a wine glass, uh, some part of a, a side profile. I think uh, Zach has a picture can show you later. But a lot of time when we think about that, what does time means to me? I think time is a luxury. Time, when the time passed, you cannot get it back. You can, you can never. I would argue if you have money, can you buy your time back? Probably not. No. No. So I have a daughter. She's gonna turn sixteen in in, in a few days. So um, I really enjoyed every moment that spend time with my family, and also enjoy the moment with my friends. And also, you guys uh, understand the my my point of view. So at a time we're talking about wash, and we're sipping our wine here. Why don't we tie this together, right? So yeah, <laughs> cheers. Absolutely. And when we drink, we don't take a shot. It's no, gonna waste your 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 drink and then waste your 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 your, your precious time together. So I want to do something about my watch. Maybe I should tie this into the wine philosophy. You you make a good wine, it takes a whole year, right? And also for that to mature, it takes time. You cannot rush it. Depends on the weather. Nobody, if you can like instantaneously make a wine, then you become super wealthy people in the whole world. But it doesn't have any uh, joy to that because the weather would, would make your wine taste different because of the, the grape it, it grow. I think Zach, you told me you live in the wine uh, country. You know yep. that in right? upstate New York, yeah. And I've got a lot of friends that uh, you know now they're starting to take over their parents' wineries, and you know it, it's it's a lot of hard work to make wine for one year to make a, any sort of vintage. Um, of course, there's many different varieties of grapes, but you know just just like he said that it, when you make wine. It's a long process. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes paying attention to all the details. You know, it takes testing. It takes, you know, a lot of different human skills that come together. Um, sometimes and most times by many people to get into one. Um, occasionally by one or two people that, you know, just have a lot of skill and they can do it together. But, you know, creating wine and drinking wine, drinking the wine is reflective, right? It's reflective of the creation process where you say, I... I, I don't chug this. I don't do shots of it. I sip it. I sip it with dinner. I sip it after dinner. I sip it with friends. You know, this is this is how I enjoy my wine. And so, you know, this, the nature of wine and the nature of the, you know, the creation process of wine forces you to slow down. You have to slow down. You have to sip it. You have to take a moment. You have to, 
enjoy it, savor it. You know, in the wine experts, I'm not a wine expert. I probably should be a lot better growing up where I grew up, but I am not a wine expert. They taste it. They they talk about the you know the flavor profile. It has this. It has this. It has nuts. It has maybe a smoky. Maybe it has a little bit of moss tasting. You know, so there's there are many many things that go on with people that taste wine, but I don't think you'll ever find anybody that I've ever met, and I'm sure they exist, but I've never met them um, that that do their best to just chug wine as fast as they can. It's always a slow experience. You have to slow down. You have to experience it. And, you know, just just as creating it, so you do in consuming it. Yes, that's true. And, and yeah. Um, yeah, very well put that. Um, that that's why I decided when I design um, this logo and also the, uh, if you can see, I put the curl screw on the, uh, the tip of the, um, the, the second hand. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like to re remind you it, oh, yeah. when we do that. That's what, when, what when that we, is. Okay. Okay. So when we look at that, and then uh, you course. look at your watch, and and we spend our time wisely. And how do you how do you uh, kind of you know you want to you want to think about what is the most important uh, uh, that makes sense and and meaning uh, meaningful uh, to your life. And that's why I tie the wine together in here. It's not to promote wine. It's just like the philosophy making wine is kind of tied into enjoy your life. And also the, the way we design watch that it's not for um, certain um, goal or I just wanted to do something I like. And the end result is just that, you know, make it different from other people. Yeah, Matthew. So Matthew, uh, for people who are, maybe you missed the memo or whatever. Matthew is our new editor in chief. He, uh, just a quick shout out. He's got 30 years of journalism experience. He writes for the LA Times. He writes for Boston Globe. He's written for People Magazine. Um, you know, very, very, very accomplished journalist. And uh, it's it's fun to talk to him because I, you know, he loves this kind of stuff. He loves this kind of like different analysis and you know just as we like to talk about experience and and watches are experienced by different people in different ways you know the same thing you can say about wine you can say about life but you know the way i experience sablier watches is you know i grew up in wine country i'm a little bit partial to it and, and you know say i'm biased about it that's fine but um you know like like casey went to rit i live in rochester now you know, it, that was kind of a bridge that we built together. Where we were like, hey, you've been here. I live here now. Um, but it's still part of the wine country experience because it's right next to it. Um, so many people come down for this sort of thing. And, you know, Matthew, if you're watching and I hope that you are, um, you know, this is the type of stuff that I think that we can really grab a hold of because there's a story to tell. And I love you. Know, we love telling stories. I mean, he tells far better stories than I do. He's got all the experience and and the way that he does it is far better than me. Um, but yeah, to enter this sort of existentialism, you know, to talk about this sort of thing, you know, this is this is the type of experience that, that we love here, you know, in OSC, Herology Republic, wherever, wherever you're watching from. This is what we're all about, is telling these stories in a way that relates in that experience. And, you know, for KC to create these watches and to create something on his own experience where he had you know, a degree in, in engineering and then a master's in design, like who better to design a watch and problem solve? You know what I mean? Like this, this you're getting everything exactly. out of something like this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I want to say hi to Matthew too. Um, so I, I do like this kind of conversation because I think the um, the watch should not be just the mater mater material thing. It should be something... Um, you know, it, you can share with, you share the story with your friend and you share part of the memory with your friend and it become your own memory. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that I, I, when, when I start this brand and you can see Sabri uh, right here. I'm sorry, there. there. Um, I, I designed the logo as the, Sabri is a French <laughs> word for hourglass. So the logo is the, um, the hourglass in your eye. And our glass is the uh, very analog uh, analog way to measure time, right? Mm -hmm. And then once we get into the mechanical, is that you have more precise, but not cannot compare to the quartz. Quartz is very 
precise <laughs> exact time, but it's less human. But if you yeah. think about the analog is more human. Is oh, it's, be- it's so much more human because for me, mechanical watches are in an era before computers and ones right. and zeros and digital things. We found a way to keep time and on ships chronometers very, very accurately so that we could explore the world because you have to know what time it is to figure out where you are, um, you know, in a way to do that. But every little piece in those mechanical movements, you know, even in this movement, this is a mass produced movement and it's it's fantastic. It's accurate. But at one point in time, it was somebody's thought they were solving a problem much the same way that you do, Casey, where you solve these problems and you say, Here's a problem. What's the root cause and, and what kind of solutions can I come up with that might address this? And of course, maybe you have three or four and you pick one or maybe you have more. Or maybe you only have one. But at one time, these were ways that people thought of, like, I need an accurate timepiece. I need to know what time it is within a certain window of accuracy. How do I get there? And in the era before mass production, in the era where everything was handmade in these little teeny pieces, were thought of it was somebody's engineering experiment to say i need to figure this out i need to i need to solve this problem i need to find a way to create something that solves this problem for me and for many other people and of course you know watches were very expensive because they were all handmade and you know it's just the way that it was until mass production kind of you know fixed that and they're still i mean relatively speaking they're still expensive but you're solving a problem with a time-honored you know technique that was somebody's engineering thought because this would have never happened if you didn't have somebody who thought there's got to be a better way to do this. There's got to be a way that I can create something out of nothing, out of metal, I guess, at this point, to create something out of metal to do this and, and to make something that's useful, that's reliable, and that I can use to sail the oceans. I can use it to just meet someone for coffee. You know, I mean, there's so many applications, but that's one of the reasons why I think this is important to, to highlight mechanical watches. But then you know, Sablier takes it a step further and says, yes, we can keep accurate time. We know how to do that. How do we make it comfortable? How do we make it worthwhile? How do we solve all the little problems that exist on watches in a way that that people can relate to? And that's why we're here talking about it. Right, right. And I and, and really like your analogy. Um, it's a, yeah, when, when, when we had a marine tie and, and that system has been established, but we need a timepiece to help us to cross the ocean. Otherwise, you cannot plot the map and where mm-hmm. you the route. You cannot do that. No. Now we have the computer, we have the satellite, we can do GPS. But now we're thinking it's it's already done. But how how does that make us more human? Probably not. Mm-mm. To make us more human is that we need to think mm-hmm. about how do we interact with other people or the people that are around you. How do we enjoy our life together? So when I create this brand, I just wanted to have a conversation piece and then share the same philosophy uh, with, uh, with other people. And uh, the concave is, is very interesting because it, it feel <clears throat> it's just not like the, uh, the regular watch. And then the, the, the way we do the concave lens and the the, um, the dial. We need to think about why why do we make it um, the hand is bended because there's so little margin there. If you don't bend your hand, the straight hand will not glide in between the uh, kind of like a disc like of the uh, uh, space. It's kind of you see the hands are gliding in orbit inside the uh, disc. If you can imagine that is that is pretty interesting it looks almost like you you, you think about a galaxy that is all planned but um they're they are going in a certain way mm-hmm. I, I like to sometimes share a story with, with friends that uh the, the concave is kind of like banded uh like a this shape of the the gal- uh, galaxy is not flat no yeah, it, it has that it has that bending of space time under, you know, of course, all the dark matter that we can't see and, you know, the light matter that we can see. Um, but the mass of that galaxy does bend space time in that way. And it, if it didn't, you wouldn't have gravitational lensing um, that you can use to see, you know, what's behind other galaxies. But, yeah, I mean, that's it's, it's an interesting way that, that you bring that up and say, you know, like the galaxy moves, 
you know, and it glides around, you know, over time, the same with these hands and, and to engineer them in a way that, you know, they're kind of bent up. I guess my fingers don't bend like that. I don't have the flexibility, but to bend like that and then still fit that margin, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like this, this is a brand of watch where everything is thought about, you know, it, the hands are thought about the corkscrew seconds hand is thought about, you know, the way that the dial and the glass interact with each other and the space in between is thought about there. There's not a thing on this watch that I've seen. And I've looked at a lot of photos over the last 48 hours of just looking at it. And I saw the schematics and, you know, just talking with KC and, and, and seeing, you know, like the way that he explains this stuff, this is an engineer's watch. You know, we like, we like to think of, you know, some of the Rolex watches, you know, the mill gauss is comes to mind. Um, the, the Aquaterra with 15,000 gauss is, is engineers watches. Um, we like to think of those as such. And I think that, you know, to a certain degree, that may be true. You've got, you know, some magnetic resistance. But as far as I can tell, that's about the only thing that they really have that lets them say that they're engineers watches is you can take it into CERN and it won't lose any time. Hey, fantastic. That's amazing. But what else about that watch was thought of by engineers? What other problems did they solve? If you ask that question when you talk about those watches, I don't know that you really get an answer. I don't know that you'll get a satisfactory answer. Um, I'm not an engineer. Math is ridiculously difficult for me. I did pass a business calculus class. We passed it. We did well. We did okay. I can do integrals. I can do derivatives. That's like after that, we're done. We can't do it. But you can't ask that question mathematically of those watches and get a good answer. But with this watch, I feel like you can. You can sit down. You can look at that watch. You can say, this is what's been made. And if you look at every single element, of course, it's more than the sum of its parts. But why not look at the parts? Why not look at those parts? Like we know that it's more than the sum of its parts, but the space between the glass and the dial, the hands glide perfectly. The second hand is a corkscrew because it fits the motif. The dial is curved up at the ends because it looks like wine as it sits in a glass. Like, like nothing hasn't been thought of here. Literally nothing has not been thought of. Every single thing. We saw the cross section. You know, hold up your glass again, Tyler. You've got you've got the one that looks like that that case the most. I mean, mine mine's there just a red wine glass, a generic. But like the case itself has that kind of it's perfect at the bottom. You know, it's nothing has not been thought yeah. of. Yeah. And also, um, Zach, the, the the photo I think I sent you uh with the um the different kind of wine glasses. Yeah, let me pull that up. We yep. can share that. Oh, I got to actually click share. I thought it would do it. There we go. Try to do it without all the emails coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can see yeah. that, you know, those within those lines, you know, there's different variations there because, of course, there's different glasses you know, for different types of wine. I, I, I'm a plebeian. So I like, I drink it from the same because that's what I do. But, you know, if, if you're a purist and you know things again, I, I should probably be a much better wine snob than I am, but I'm not. Um, but the, the shape of those glasses, you can see it in the case. Um, well, I guess that one, that one doesn't show it, but the shape of these glasses in the cross section, when you look at the cross section of the case, as we did earlier, I mean, it's, it's apparent it's there, you know, when Tyler held up his glass, I was like, there, there it is. You can see it right yeah. away. You can immediately see where yeah. that, that inspiration came from. Right. Right. And also you, you, you know, it's so comfortable. To and I think, this. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I think like this brand just compared to like everything that's out there, everything's been done the same way for so long. And every like a lot of people that are getting into it are just tweaking like a little thing here or there. They like rewrote the whole book with this kind of watch. Yeah. Like everything's tied in together. Nothing was left out. Like from the top to the bottom to the strap, like everything's been perfect perfected whenever it came out. Like you know, I feel like that tells more of a story than some of the mass produced stuff now. Yeah. Like just everything I agree. tied in together. It's more of a conversation piece. 
And and that's why I say it's a golden age, and I'm sure Tyler will agree with me. It's a golden age for micro brands right now, but certain micro brands, not everyone. Yeah. Some can get it Definitely. right, but others are still basing things off of, well, I like this watch, so I'm going to tweak it a little bit, but it still kind of looks like it, but now it's mine. Like, no, this is completely new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Completely new, completely different. You know, it, every single thing is thought of. And, and that's why I'm saying, I think that, you know, when you look at a brand like Sablier, it's, it, you you can't you can't look at it and not see these little details. And I think the longer you look at it, the more you see. You know that that's if I could sum everything up with with, with what I see with Sablier watches. You know, um, and I'm sure some of my friends in France. I have a friend, um, you know, that works at Louis Vuitton. She's probably rolling her eyes at my pronunciation, and that's that's fine. But she she would probably say in the design of details and the way that that stuff works is paramount to the overall product that you produce. And, and she said that to me before about, you know, the way that things are produced in certain design houses in France and, and not just France, all, all over the world. When, when, when places are, are design, you know, centers, this is what they do. They have their own language and they try to create things that, re that represent that language. And, you know, when you look at Sablier as a company and then you zoom in on the watches, you know, it, you see it. it. It's it's hard to not see. And, and I'm sure the longer you look, the more you see. You notice those little details. Because I, I looked initially the first time I saw the watches, I just liked the burgundy color. I, and I'm a simpleton. It's, it's ooh, colors, pretty pictures. That's, that's how I work. That's how my brain operates. I saw the pretty picture. I was like, that's pretty. I like that. Let me look at it. This is cool. But the longer I looked, the more. And then you see, like, you know, we've got the, the glasses up on the screen. You see the cross section. You're like, that's a wine glass. That's a wine glass case. Like, who else has done this? And then you see the concavity of it, and it's like, oh, you know, you're not the watch like, is bust like, up. Yeah, go no, go ahead. If you want to say something, go ahead. It's like I talk a lot. I'll ramble. It's like the I spy book of uh, watches. Like the longer you look at it, you're gonna find something new and unique that you haven't seen yeah. across the board anywhere yeah. else. And I think I kind of want to go out and buy one now. So since you're in Atlanta. I'm right up the road. You, you may have to right. Yeah, and, now. yeah, let me know. We can meet up. And um, so I know Zach, you like detail. I'm gonna share uh, one detail to to you guys too um, about the dial. So let me put it in. Okay. Put it in. Uh, where is it? No, I want this one. Solo layout. <laughs> There we go. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So um, I designed the um, the layout. If you can see the layout, um, some people was asking me why the logo is under three o'clock, and I pushed the, the date to the um, uh, between uh, four and five. I, I think sometimes when you wear watches, and then you, your watch would probably partially covered by the cuff, right? So if if you you wear it, like your 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 sleeve covered partially, I want my uh, logo to be seen. And the date, though, like those, it, even if it's half covered, uh, you can see everything yeah. you need to see. So that's a function for the function and also for your brand, right? And then for I design the uh, the in, uh, industry and also the um, I want this like a six, nine, and twelve. Um, they are bigger. Um, it's, easy for you to identify the, the landmark of a 6, 9, and 12. And you know 3 is the, your uh, the, the logo. Mm -hmm. And the thickness, the width of the the width of the uh, the, the second hand, I'm sorry, the width of the hour hand is the same width of the hour mark for for the uh, the, the 6, 9, uh, nine so and 12. So it's perfectly I told and you it, everything was thought of. There's nothing on this watch that wasn't considered. Oh yeah, and and the uh, the the uh, the mini hand is the same width of the uh, a smaller uh, the baton uh, here, so very tiny uh, space between the, these two. I'm sorry here, mm -hmm. and 
and this kind of like a, um, a radiate um, the, the design um, kind of mimicking the, 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 your pupil, the iris. If I, if I talk about a human anatomy, so I talk about eye, I talk about the, uh, my, uh, the, the hourglass is your eye. So there's some detail that I thought of uh, before I actually uh, executed. So many different designs, but I decided I wanted to execute in this way. Yeah, and that's exactly why I, I like to say that that you know this is this is one of those watches where everything is thought of. I mean, I I didn't know that about the you know the hour hand and the minute hand and the indices and you know how they match up. It's there. There's not a thing on this watch that wasn't considered. You know, it, uh, so many other micro brands. Question, especially when especially when you talk about micro brands, it's just an afterthought. One thing I haven't seen uh, the case back. What does that look like on there? I can share the picture. Or he can show you. We do have a picture of it. No case. But I think he'll. Oh, so to it a is. Mirror, by the way, exhibition. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Oh, I like the guilloche on the rotor too. What kind of? What kind of movement is in it? Uh, this one is the ETA twenty eight ninety two A two. Okay. Yeah. Makes so it easy to yes. service. Right, and, and it's very uh, accurate, and also uh, it's, because it's it's thinner, thinner than the uh, the first generation. The first generation is slightly taller. Um, I, oh, you know what? I have a first generation here. I can show you guys. Yeah, it's it's just interesting to me that you know so many other micro brands are just. It's, di it's so diver heavy. I love divers. I think divers are fantastic, but they're just so diver heavy. So this is the first generation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit thicker. A little yeah. bit taller. What does it compare to, like, uh, thickness-wise? Like, it, what's the most comparable watch that you could think of? You mean compared to this, the thickness wise? Yes. I think the because of the, the nature of the case, it, it, it looks chunky, but my other watches, for instance, like um, okay. So this is one of my Omega. Oh yeah. It's actually very close in terms of thickness. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So that'll Yeah, now that I see spot. it side by side. Yeah. Makes sense. But because okay. they So it's really not as thick make, as it appears. No, it's sometimes an illusion, right? So when you design and then and you do different thing to make it like visually thinner. Like for instance, there's a there's a, a kind of a notches here and then also the step here. But the thickness actually is, they are very close. Let me see. I have a micro monitor here. He's got it going on over here. Oh yeah, he's got he's all the tools. For every ready to question. Go. That's what I'm talking so about. So the the thickest point, this one is 14 uh, point point five one, one millimeter. So that's for Omega and for my for my subway watches. Let me measure this one. It even point. It's almost like twelve. Yeah, almost twelve minutes. So you got about about two millimeters, oh, okay. almost almost two point five millimeters of of difference there. Right. So, would, in terms of wear comfort, is yeah, but for some reason the Omega looks kind of smaller. Um, 
compared to the Sabri A? Well, I think that you know the metal and the in the the case dimensions on on Omega are very. You got the convexness, so you've got that rolling off feel where it may look thinner, but the sablier has concavity, which gives it a little bit more of a substantial feeling and a substantial look to it. I think you know when you when you look at the two, you know when you held them up and you're like, this one's you know fourteen point five, and this one's you know just about twelve, eleven point nine, you know just about twelve. It's like it, you're almost surprised because you know it does look that way, but you know, we're all familiar with optical illusions and things like that and things looking this way, but really being something else. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think that might be part of it. You know, the concavity, you know, lends to that good solid look as well as the feeling. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, we're coming <clears throat> up on an hour and 10 minutes. I told Casey we would only take an hour of his time. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that, you know, I think what we can do now is we'll go around. Maybe if we've got one last thing we want to say, um, we, before we say our goodbyes and, and our sign off here. Um, and that way we don't, we don't take up all of Casey's day. Cause I could sit and talk about details for hours on end. Um, he noticed that yesterday when we had a two and a half hour conversation where all we did was talk about details, <laughs> That's right. watch manufacturing, but I won't subject everyone else to that. I know that, you know, it, it is Saturday. It is, you know, time for people to have dinner and things like that. So um, we'll go. How about how about we have one more thing? If you guys want to say one more thing, um, whether it's about this or it's about watches in general, it can be about whatever. Why don't we start with it? We'll start with Casey. Um, one more thing, I, I, I just, I mean, before I say that, I just uh, thank you, uh, Zach, and also Tara, inviting me uh, for this uh, conversation. I really enjoyed that, and it gave me the uh, chance to to talk about my watch. But the last thing I want to say is the uh, we we need to be more human and and live in a life and uh, be kind and also uh, enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like that for sure. Tyler, what you signing off with? Let's see. Uh, I'm definitely a buyer. <laughs> I <laughs> definitely want to meet up with you one day soon and check them out. No doubt. I love the yes. story behind it. And uh, like basically the wine and the time, it all ties in with life in general. So it's a really neat story be behind it. And uh, I'm all for it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you, KC, for bringing that over to us, letting us sit down, you know, take a little bit of your of your weekend and, and talk about this, um, you know, in kind of more detail. I, I think this is just one of those watches that, you know, uh, the pictures don't really do them justice. I saw some good pictures um, when I saw the schematics, you know, you start to put that stuff together. So, you know, for me, it's it's all about the details and telling the story and this is a story like we we could probably do a few episodes of this and, and maybe we will. I think one of the things we probably will do with KC is I know we've, we've promised some longer episodes on our podcast. We had hot takes last summer. Everybody loved the, you know, five, six minute hot takes on stuff. Um, but I did get quite a bit of email from people saying, I, I love these, but I want to do something longer. Maybe you could do some more like interview style stuff. And I think, you know, this would probably be a first a first one to kick it off, a good one to kick it off with where we could talk about those design details. Um, Christian couldn't join us tonight. He's he's always into materials processing, you know, ceramics, you know, magnetics, things like that, how they work, why they affect watches, you know, the just the whole manufacturing process. So um, it's a shame he couldn't be here, but I think maybe for the podcast, we'll bring him on. So he can ask some fun questions and get a little bit of insight because I think he would really enjoy this. But um, yeah, thank you, Casey, for bringing this to, you know, bringing this to us and, and, and letting us talk your ear off for an hour and, and talk about your watch. Really. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And I think that you, yes. you mentioned that we can do it. something. Uh, I, I, I do too. And I'll, I'll send the uh, watch for Zach so you can see that in person. So yeah yeah i would love to see that one that one's my favorite one i love i love the burgundy and the cork i think that's just fantastic but i grew up in i grew up in upstate new york where they make wine you can't you can't drive your car a mile without running into a winery up here that's just the way that it is somebody's making wine so matthew says terrific stream beautiful watch cheers with the bubbly water 
Um, if I drink wine, I turn bright red. Yeah, I know a few people that do that too. So yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I have very red undertones to my skin, so I've got the white lines going on, you know, just so I can not look like a, you know, one of the stripes behind me. But that's my yacht ensign flag. Got the little anchor up there. So, um, yeah, I think that uh, I think we'll definitely have you back. This is fantastic. I I I would love to do a full review. Um, we'll get up a little bit later. We can talk about that. Um, and we'd love to have you on one of our actual just voice only podcasts. We do a bunch of voice only that way. Um, very similar, very similar format. We just kind of record it and then edit it and then and then release it. So, um, yeah, from all of us here at Herald's Republic, um, we want to thank Sablier Watches for for joining us. Casey specifically. Tyler, it's been fun as it always is. Um, thank you guys for always. watching. It's been absolutely fun. We'll see you all later. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen. Have a wonderful weekend. Have you a good rest of your weekend. You too. <laughs>